VIP. Hello, AP Calculus students. Mr. Record here. We are still experiencing Ice Again 2018 e-learning day with ice and sleet coming down in Avon, Indiana. So we are going to talk a little bit about the trapezoidal sum here in our final example, number nine. If you're watching this video from outside Avon, uh, I would strongly encourage you, you might take a look at the trapezoidal rule video, which is also known as example eight. And um, so in, so what is the trapezoid sum? Well, rather than using that very long involved trapezoidal rule formula, which is what we, we saw in a previous video, the stuff that's in this tremendously long box here with all of these terms and so forth, we will instead think about just finding the area of several different trapezoids. So if we read through the problem, it says, the following table shows the speed in miles per hour of a cyclist at various times. Use a trapezoidal approximation to find the distance in miles that the cyclist travels in the 12 minute time interval. Now, one thing that we are going to start making uh, it very clear is that one of the most powerful applications of the definite integral is that if we were to integrate a speed such as miles per hour, we will get distance. And that's a very powerful thing. So in this particular case, by finding this definite integral of this speed from time A to time B, we'll figure out how far this cyclist has, has ridden. But we're not going to be able to integrate in the in the traditional sense by taking an antiderivative because we don't have a function here. But instead, we're going to approximate it by using this trapezoidal approach. So one way that you could begin this process, uh, it's not necessary, not mandatory that you do this, but sometimes this can be somewhat helpful, is if I think about a graph of this situation and I can let my t reside along the horizontal axis. Obviously, here would be at time zero. And if you look through your chart, you got some various times like two and five and six and nine and 10 and 12, if I try to space them apart somewhat logically. And then the miles per hour is going to act as our independent, or I'm sorry, our dependent variable. So that's what we have pretty much along the y axis, the speed. But the thing is, is that it's not necessary to graph this in its entirety. I don't have to sketch a, a, a distance of 33 at t equals zero or 25. All I have to know is that this would have a length of 33, as well as this would have a length of 25, and this guy here at five would have a length of 27. But I'm not gonna finish that process because it's not really important. You're gonna find that you can figure this out simply by assembling the areas of several trapezoids. So if I start this up, the area using a trapezoidal approach, the first thing that I wanna do is figure out, okay, here I am, trapezoid number one, what would that particular area be? And we know that the formula for the area trapezoid is one half times the sum of the bases, which in this case is 33 plus 25, and then we would multiply that by the height, which in this case is this length along the t-axis, which is two. And then we move on to the second trapezoid and we'd have one half times the quantity. Now we're talking about using the left side and the right side's measurements, 25 and 27. And that would work just fine. Let's go with 27 there. That might be a little bit better, 27. And the distance along the bottom, which is the height in this case, would be three. Now, see, that's, that's the tricky part about this. Because these widths along the bottom have different values and are not consistent, we aren't really able to factor out that h, also known as the b minus a over n. And therefore, that is why we don't use that trapezoid rule uh, that we talked about in a previous video. And it turns out that even if your widths were the same and you didn't want to mess around with that very bothersome trapezoid rule, you wouldn't have to because this method that I'm showing you in this example will work for 
any kind of a trapezoidal sum setup. All right, we're going to continue working through this. One half would be multiplied by the next two uh, bases, which we're going to use 27 and 13 here. And the width along that interval is a 1. Continuing with 1 half times 13 plus 21. With a width of 3. Almost there, we're going to use 21 and 5 as our next two bases. And that has a width of 1. And I don't quite have enough room here, so I'll just kind of drop it down here on the next line. 1 half of 5 plus 9, and then we have a width of 2. Now, the rest of this is just kind of, you know, slightly aggravating uh, <laughs> arithmetic, if you will. Now, I do know that I do have a 1 half that I could factor out. That's going to make things a little easier. So let's run through this. If we have 33 plus 25, that would be a 58. And we still multiply by a 2. 25 and 27 would be 52. That would be multiplied by a 3. 27 and 13 is 40. Multiplied by a 1. 13 and 21, that would be 34. Multiplied by a 3. 21 and 5 is a course 26 multiplied by a width of 1, 5 plus 9 is 14, multiplied by 2. Next, we just do some more arithmetic. 58 times 2, let's see, what would that be? 116. 52 times 3 is 156. 40 times 1 is easy. 34 times 3, I want to say that that would be uh, 34 times 3, looks like 102, uh, I believe, 102, 26 times 1, and then 14 times 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause the video because I know that you can type all this stuff in the calculator and we'll kind of see what our final result turns out to be. So when I do add these terms together, uh, I believe I get 468. I can double check here from the calculator and yep, it looks like 468. And uh, that's a pretty easy number to take one half of. I end up with 234. So if we kind of look back at this, um, we think, hmm, wow, this cyclist fast that's like that's powerful that's amazing how could the cyclist go this entire distance which uh, i believe we're calling it 234 miles in just 12 minutes um that's a that's a pretty quick pace so we got to think about something here um and it's very easy to do this it's very easy to want to just dive right into the numbers and do these calculations and not really think about what the units are going to be. But if you do consider what, what's happening here is we have a conflict of units. Your speed is measured in miles per hour and our time is measured in minutes. Well, be, because we're integrating the speed specifically, our output here is going to have really no choice but think that our, our, our linear measurement is going to be in this units here of miles. Right. Well, that's true, but it's also been tricked into thinking that we were not riding for 12 minutes, but for 12 hours. And, you know, it's very possible at a very quick pace, maybe we could go this far in 12 hours. But that's asking an awful lot of a rider to be able to maintain these speeds over that particular time. So what we're going to have to do is convert our typical hour approach, uh, I'm sorry, our typical minutes up here into hours. And that's just a simple matter of, of dividing everything by 60. And we could do that after the fact. We could do that throughout the problem. It makes no difference. Like if I put a, a, a multiplication of 1 over 60 throughout the problem, it's just a matter of by the time we get down to the bottom, right here, we're going to just divide this guy by 60. Again, this needed to be divided by or multiplied by 1 over 60. So if we go back here and we take our 234, we've already done our division by 2. And if we divide by 60, we're going to end up getting 3.9. Now that makes a lot more sense. 
we can say in this particular problem, if I can bring it back up here, that this is going to be equivalent to 3.9 miles. And that does make a lot more sense. In 12 minutes, that's exactly how far this rider was able to go. All right. So anyway, that's a great application of using a trapezoidal sum. Just got to be really careful. Watch out for those units. I want to warn my students, those of you working on the on the uh, homework for section 4.3 part B, I do have a few problems that has this unit discrepancy. Pay real close attention. Um, I'm even going to go so far as to say, look, look out for that section 4.3 quiz as well, because we'll possibly have that unit discrepancy there in addition. Take care of it just by dividing by 60. Anyway, I hope this helps. We'll see you next time. Next time.